You may be seated. We stand as we begin our worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We take a moment of silence to confess our sins to God and to reflect on our need for his forgiveness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We continue with the Kyrie. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. You may be seated for our next hymn, hymn 575, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Almighty God, you exercise your great authority by showing mercy to us sinners and forgiving our sins for the sake of your Son. Grant that we may know with joy your grace and respond with thankful hearts before the day when your mercy will cease and the day of judgment has come. Through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray. We continue with our readings from the Bible. The first lesson is from the 43rd chapter of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings forth chariot and horse, army and warrior, They lie down, they cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild beasts will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches. For I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, that they might declare my praise. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from the third chapter of Philippians. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ the righteousness from God that depends on faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible, I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand and sing the Lenten verse. Turn to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and abounding in steadfast love. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 20th chapter. And Jesus began to tell the people this parable. A man planted a vineyard and led led it out to tenants and went into another country for a long while. When the time came, he sent a servant to the tenants so that they would give him some of the fruit of the vineyard. But the tenants beat him and sent him away empty-handed. And he sent another servant, but they also beat and treated him shamefully, and sent him away empty-handed. And he sent yet a third, this one they also wounded and cast out. Then the owner of the vineyard said, What shall I do? I will send my beloved son, perhaps they will respect him. But when the tenants saw him, they said to themselves, This is the heir, let us kill him so that the inheritance may be ours. And they threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. What then will the owner of the vineyard do to them? He will come and destroy those tenants and give the vineyard to others. When they heard this, they said, 
Surely not. But he looked directly at them and said, What then is this that is written? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Everyone who falls on that stone will be broken to pieces, and when it falls on anyone, it will crush him. This is the word of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We continue by confessing our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. You may be seated. This time we invite our children to come forward for the children's message. Good morning, boys and girls. I don't know if you have been paying attention in worship so far today, but there's kind of been a theme that like the songs are kind of all the same and the readings from the Bible are kind of all the same. And so today we are talking about foundations and cornerstones. Whoa. Does anybody know what a foundation is? What? A platform, yeah. What do we build on top of a foundation usually? A house, there you go. Yeah, we build a house on top of a foundation. And specifically, there's something called a cornerstone. Have you heard that term before, the cornerstone? Okay, have you ever built with blocks at home? Yeah, usually when we build with blocks at home, we start with one piece and then build from there. And so the cornerstone is that first piece that we start with. So I brought some blocks today. Okay, let's pretend that this is our cornerstone, okay? So that's the first one we're gonna do. We're gonna put that there, and then I think we'll make a little tower today. Okay, that looks like a pretty good foundation, right? Like to build on top of? Okay, so then, We'll do something like this, and then we'll make it really high. Whew, I think we can make it really high. Okay, those are all the blocks I have today. Okay, can everyone see our little tower? Let's do it this way. Okay, there we go. So now remember, we started with one block, right? That was the cornerstone, that was this one, the one that we started with. Then we made our foundation, which was the rest of them, and then we built up. You've probably done lots of towers like this at home. Right? I know we build lots of towers in my house. Okay, so what happens if I take the cornerstone out? Should we see what happens? Okay, here we go. Maybe I'll do it really carefully. Man. Oh, darn it. It fell down. I took that one out and it just crashed, right? Oh, sometimes it's kind of fun to make it crash, but I really wanted our tower to stand today. Hmm. 
You know what? In the Bible, Jesus tells us that he is our foundation. He's our cornerstone. He is the one that we build our life upon. And so we go to worship. <laughs> we go to worship and we read the Bible and we learn about him so that we have a strong foundation of Jesus. So when things, sometimes things happen in life that make us go, oh man, that's kind of scary. But we know that Jesus is our foundation so we won't fall apart. Without Jesus, everything just falls apart like this. But Jesus can be our foundation and our strong one to help build our life, okay? So today I want you to go home and build a tower, okay? Start with one block or one Lego or something and see how tall you can build it. Okay? Yeah, Ben. Awesome. Can you build it as tall as you? Okay, cool. All right. I want you to go home and build with blocks today. Awesome. All right. Let's, okay, let's fold our hands and let's say a prayer today. Dear Jesus, Please help me to build my life on you, my solid foundation. I love you, Jesus. Amen. All right, you guys can take a seat.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to give you a a little peek into my twisted brain. And I guess we all kind of have twisted brains in our own way, but these are the sort of thoughts I have sometimes. And and I'm a little hesitant to share this with you, but, but, but here it goes. I love my wife. I love her so much. She has decorated my life like she has brought me so much joy. And I love her. I, I, I do. She's going to be at the late service, and she's going to have to hear me say this. Might turn red. But I do. She's wonderful. Some of you have met her. Great gal. Great gal. Good mother. Great partner. But sometimes I look at her, and I think, no one could ruin my life like that woman. <laughs> she could burn it to the ground if she wanted to. I don't think she will, but she could. She could ruin me financially. She could take my children away, right? She could smother me with a pillow while I sleep. Like, she has access to me. She has some, you know, reasons probably that I've given to her. Think about her. I love her. She's everything to me, a blessing to me, a gift from God. But oh man, she could be my end, my destruction. Yes. That's my wife. I don't know if you've ever had that thoughts about that sort of thought about your spouse. Maybe that's a little bit too twisted. But it's just true, right? No one has that sort of power over you like the one you love the most. To break your heart. You know, to just take everything that is dear to you. There's a lot of things when you think about in life that can bring us great blessings. Amazing blessings. But they also have the potential to destroy us, to ruin us. It sort of goes hand in hand. Anything that's really great in your life, that makes your life better, could, on the flip side, be really bad for you. I mean, anything, right? There are life-saving medications that might be prescribed to you. Life-saving medications. But, you take those medications in the wrong way, too much, too little, mix it with the wrong thing, gone. Right? Nuclear power, right? We all wonder about power and emissions and all sorts of things. Like, nuclear is where it's at, but we all remember Chernobyl and Three Mile Island, and the Fukushima power plant disaster in Japan. It's a great, great source of energy and yet so destructive if something goes wrong. The fire in your fireplace that keeps your house warm during the winter can burn that house down. The firearm you keep in your bedside table, it might save your family's life or it might bring great tragedy into your household. This is just a reality of the lives that we live. The things that can bless us and protect us and benefit us can turn around and bite us, can ruin us, can destroy us. Just how it is. It's how it is. And Jesus talks in those terms a little bit today. He talks about himself as a stone. As Emily told the children today, and as you've noticed in the hymns, talking about a stone today. Stone is a fairly inert thing, right? a fairly neutral thing, but there's power to benefit and bless, there's power to destroy. Jesus, in our gospel reading today, told this parable, and it's a really good parable, and I'm not going to dive into it too much, because I'm going to go another way with today's sermon. He told a parable about a a rich man who who lent his his land out to tenants, and the tenants keep rejecting the the servants that are sent to them, and, and ultimately they kill the son, right? This is a parable all about how Christ, the Son of God, is rejected by God's own people, the Israelites. It's not that tough of a one, tough of a parable to decode, right? It's about how Jesus has been rejected by the religious elite, right? How he's been rejected by Israel. What I want to focus on is is the statement that Jesus makes after the parable. He quotes Psalm 118. The stone that the builders have rejected has become the cornerstone. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. That's a blessing, cornerstone. That's what Emily talked about today, right? Everything relies on the cornerstone being set properly. 
right? The cornerstone is where we start the foundation on which we build the great buildings. But there will be some who trip on that stone and break themselves into pieces, and there are those that the stone will fall upon and crush. What Jesus is talking about here is that he is this stone that the builders have rejected. He is the cornerstone for God's people. Everything, the church, the kingdom of God is built on him. It's a blessing. Christ is a blessing to us. I don't, that's, that's an understatement, right? We're here worshiping Christ because we know everything he's done for us. His gracious and merciful work in claiming us and saving us. We know that Christ is our cornerstone. We've been singing these songs. Built on the rock, the church will stand. Right? But, we should never lose sight of the fact that Christ is also coming again to judge. That while Christ is benevolent beyond belief to those who believe in him, who trust in him, who follow, in him, who follow him, he also brings judgment. He is the stone that some will fall upon and break into pieces. He is the stone that will crush. This is Jesus. We confess it in our creeds, right? He's coming again to judge the living and the dead. He has the power to save and the power to condemn. Sheep and goats. This is Jesus. When he talks about being the stone, this is what he's talking about. See, Jesus is an objective truth. He is the Son of God. He came to this world. He died for us. He rose for us. We're going to be celebrating Easter in two weeks. He ascended to the right hand of the Father, and he's coming again. That's not the question. The question is, how are you oriented towards Christ? What is your relationship to this stone that the builders rejected? Have you received Christ? Do you trust in him? Do you believe in him? Do you follow him? Do you love him? Is he a benefit to you? Is he a blessing for you? Or have you rejected him? Have you gone your own way? Do you not need him? Have you despised him, forsaken him? There's all different ways of talking about it. But this is the judgment. This is the judgment. Christ has come into the world. He has done these things. That's set. There's no changing that. What about you? How are you disposed towards him? How are you oriented towards him? As a believer? Or as one who's rejected him? Because this is what we know about Jesus. He came into the world to save the world. That God so loved the world that he sent his son to save the world. Not just me, not just you, but everyone. When Jesus hung on that tree, and we'll talk about that on Good Friday here in about 10 days. When Jesus hung on that tree, he died for everyone. For all time. Regardless of your gender, skin color, ethnicity, nationality, doesn't matter. Jesus died for everyone. What's your response to that? To trust in him, to believe in him, or to reject that gift and go your own way. Is the stone your cornerstone, or is it the stone that will break you to pieces, the stone that will crush you someday? You know, it's not really children's message material, right? We like to talk about the one side, Christ as cornerstone, and that's good and that's right, because we are a community of believers. But we never need to lose sight of the other side of Jesus' work. Right? He is the king of all, the judge of all. God desires that all people be saved. But we're sinners. And many say, I don't need you. I'm fine on my own. I'm going to find my own gods to worship. I'm going to travel down my own path. There are consequences to this. We never lose sight of that. There are consequences. Jesus is 
rejected. He was rejected in his own time. That's the story that we keep seeing in the Gospels time and time again. For all those who loved Jesus, loved Jesus and came to Jesus and, and believed in Jesus and, and bowed down and prayed to Jesus, there's just as many who didn't want anything to do with him, who conspired against him. Who, even though they saw the signs, saw his miracles, heard his teachings, could not humble themselves to follow Christ consequences. Christ was rejected by the people that he came to save. And he's still rejected today. And here's the thing that I want to kind of impress upon you today. If you're going to follow Jesus and you all claim to want to follow Jesus and that's why we're here today to equip ourselves to follow Jesus in the world as we leave this building if Christ faced rejection in his time, and if he still faces rejection now, do not be surprised when you face rejection for Christ's sake too. It still hurts our feelings. It still catches us off guard sometimes. It still surprises us and breaks our heart when the world doesn't accept the message that we bring. When the world doesn't accept us for our faith. But it shouldn't be surprising. The world rejected Christ. It will reject you if you are a true disciple. And this is hard because rejection is one of our greatest fears. I think some of us fear rejection even more than we fear like death and poverty. It keeps us from doing all sorts of things that we know are good for us. The fear of rejection keeps us from sort of pursuing relationships that we would like to have. What if they say no? What if they turn me away? You know, it's not the actual being turned away, it's the fear of that rejection that keeps us from things. It keeps us from pursuing career opportunities. What if I'm not good enough? What if I'm not qualified enough or smart enough? What if they tell me no? Well, I'm just back where I began. And it keeps us quiet about our faith. I've experienced that, you've experienced that. We know that we are called to be witnesses, to speak God's saving gospel to other people, and yet when those opportunities prevent them, present themselves, we struggle. We clam up. Right? What if this message isn't palatable for this person? What if they think less of me? What if they don't want to be my friend anymore? The fear of rejection is very, very real. And it keeps us from living the full lives that we are called to live. Rejection is very, very real. But can we be okay with that? Can we remember that Christ was rejected? And this is the promise he made to those who would come after him. The world might hate us for his sake. Can we persevere? Can we live in boldness? Knowing that our home is not this present age. It's not this world. We've been assured of a much greater home, a much greater future, a much greater reality. We are empowered to live boldly and take chances and face rejection because we know who accepts us. Our Heavenly Father, our Lord and Savior, they will not reject us. They have accepted us. They have claimed us as their own in baptism. So the message today is fairly simple. Right? It's a message that I think pretty much anyone can understand a stone has the power to bless you build on the stone but it also has the power to destroy can crush how are you oriented towards the stone that is our savior jesus christ is he a blessing to you have you built your life on the truth that he is your savior that he is the son of god that he is the messiah or would you rather go your own way would you rather take your chances facing the judgment of the stone, facing the crushing weight of the Son of God someday. It's a little scary. I get that. But these are Christ's words. And he doesn't mince words. Jesus isn't just a teddy bear, right? He's not just this one-sided caricature, right? He is the Messiah. He is the stone. He is the judgment. But he was rejected. And you might be as well. So God bless you this day as you live 
in the boldness of Christ. Knowing that although the world may reject you, you have a home in his kingdom. That you have been accepted. And that's the best news that I can tell you. He died for you. He rose for you. And you will be found with the sheep on the last day. Thanks be to God for that. Amen. We stand for prayer. <clears throat> In our prayers this morning, we lift up to God for healing and strength Joe Duke, Marlis Ziegler, Dave Seibel, Joanne Fickner, Keith Strand, Ethel Duke, Dalen Schmitz, Doug Thorson, Shirley Tilke, Danielle Miller, Gail Friesen, James Chone, Dan Nundahl, Brittany Nundahl, Mark Feldy, Mavis Jones, Cody Cox, and Shirley Nelson. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For the church, the people of God, led from slavery in the wilderness of death to the freedom in life through the forgiveness of sins, for boldness to proclaim the saving gospel to all those still captive, and for strength in the face of temptation. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy, for all pastors and church workers, that they be kept in holiness, and for those who receive their ministry, that they be brought to faith and sustained in hope. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. For courage in the face of temptation, strength in time of test, and hope in the face of despair, that nothing may cause our faith to waver from our confidence in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. For blessing upon the government and institutions of our land, for the light of God's word to shine in the wilderness of unbelief, and for peace in our nation and among the nations of the world, let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. For the sick and those who suffer any need of body, mind, or soul, that God grant them healing according to his will and strength to endure their afflictions. Today we pray especially for Joe, Marlis, Dave, Joanne, Keith, Ethel, Dalen, Doug, Shirley, Danielle, Gail, James, Dan, Brittany, Mark, Mavis, Cody, and Shirley. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For hearts fully prepared through repentance and faith to receive the gifts of the Lord's body and blood and for the will to show forth in our lives the fruits of this blessed communion, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. This time, you may be seated. We'll worship the Lord with our offering.
We continue by singing the offertory, Create in Me. We continue at the service of the sacrament, which can be found on page 160 in your hymnal. The Lord be with you. I might have rushed it for Sue there. <laughs> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many, that with cleansed hearts we might be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal Feast in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship, with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We stand for the Lord's Prayer. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup, is the new, is, this cup is the blood of my New Testament shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. 
Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the
We stand for prayer. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. close with our sending hymn, Almighty Father, bless the word. be seated. It was great to see all of you this morning. Uh, what a privilege it is to gather together as the body of Christ and to receive his gifts of word and sacrament. We have a lot of uh, worship service opportunities coming up in the next few weeks. We hope that you can join us next week for Palm Sunday, uh, Maundy Thursday. We have kind of a special service plan, something a little different for Maundy Thursday. Good Friday, Tenebrae service, and of course three services on Easter morning. A sunrise service at 630 and then our normal services at 8 and 10.30. It's going to be really good music and, and just a, a great time to celebrate the resurrection of Christ. Uh, there will be an Easter breakfast that runs all morning. Uh, the proceeds benefit our youth group as they look forward to the national youth gathering. So uh, a, lot of, a lot of stuff coming up. Busiest and best time of the year, if you ask me. So uh, we'd love to invite any of the adults to join us downstairs for adult Bible class. Love to see the kids in Sunday school as well. Uh, today's message was, was fairly simple. We hear from the mouth of Jesus that he is the stone that the builders have rejected and uh, he has become our cornerstone. So God bless you this week as you build your life and your hope on Christ. I'll see you out in the hallway.